Hey everyone, today I'll be talking with 4 mana, an endgame Lightbringer. If you'd like to learn how to play Lightbringer for both PvE and PvP, then stay tuned for this two-part interview series. Let's begin with part 1 of this interview with PvE. You may be wondering, what happened to that usual 0% dummy smash from your interviewee? Well, 4mana didn't want to mislead people about how Lightbringer does in PvE. When you see his gear and deposits, you'll understand why this is the case, as you might think Lightbringer is actually a lot better than it actually is in the current meta. I'll be showing some footage with my own character on my CPT account using 4mana's build which I learned from this interview. The CPT server is quite empty, so I can actually show some high-end MVPs that would typically be gone in a minute or so on C and Global. There were times when Lightbringers were the undisputed MVP nuking class, but these days is not as popular and continuous DPS classes such as Novice Guardian, Rune Masters, and Taekwon can better deal with these MVPs and APOC MVPs. In addition, Wataru is also very good at doing burst. These high-end MVPs are difficult to one-shot as a Lightbringer, which often leads to awkward situations of waiting for your burst skills to recover when you fail to one-shot it. For mana himself uses Novice Guardian or Taekwon for APOC MVPs, and Novice Guardian or Wataru depending on the MVP for board and off-board. Despite that, Lightbringers are still one of the best classes for new people to start out with, and you can still do very well against low board MVPs and feel the thrill of MVP hunting. For weekly instances, the damage is also above average compared to other classes, so you'll be doing fine there as well. I have a free-to-play Lightbringer account with 8% damage deposits, and it can do quite a bit of damage and is fun to play. A lot of people have requested Lightbringer guides, and 4mana provides great insight into building this class. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's begin. First, what is the origin of your in-game name? He said, Magic the Gathering's resource is mana. I used to play it when I was younger. 4mana as an in-game name just came naturally. Next, why did you choose Lightbringer? He said, I've been playing the Merchant class since 2004. Tier 3 drop was coincidentally mechanic, but I quit Classic RO before it became available. Next, what are some minimum requirements to play Lightbringer? He said, just a plus 10 avalanche, then you can keep working towards getting better and better ancient equipment gears. If a new player wants to start playing fresh from a new account, then LB is definitely the best way to start. It's very easy to start farming, then having 13 Ven slots helps a lot. Then you can multi to other jobs that you want. Here's the plus 10 avalanche 4 mana mentioned, which is really cheap to craft and very powerful. It's also not really ruin reliant, unlike other jobs, so this should be very easy for newer players. Next, do you farm with Lightbringer? He said, no, you can ask Kronas. Thanks to Miss, who's known as Kronas Dese, who is able to help out with these farming questions. The goal is 4 million zenny per 240 combat time. Farming was done with arm cannon, and the AI also uses arm cannon. Need AI to one shot with arm cannon. Miss mentioned that arm cannon for AI is good for dense maps. Photon cannon can be used for less dense maps. Miss says the only goal was to farm fuels, that's why Miss farmed with Lightbringer. The use of Mistress Star was also used to avoid using shells with Arm Cannon. Next, how well do you think Lightbringer performs in boss hunting? He said, versus other jobs on Relic MVPs, not that good at the moment to be honest, but it depends on the server. He goes on to describe his strategy for these Relic bosses. First Seed, probably the best start for LBs since you can use Machine Revolution from Mount but still RNG fast. Next, Soul. Only if you can one-shot with Pioneer, which is not feasible for most players. But it's easy to solo if you just knuckle boost, then last hit with Pioneer. Kraken. 
not viable since the tentacle update. If you hit the shield tentacle, Pioneer will somehow attack another one which will disarm you. Next is Taoganka. Feasible and easy, but sometimes your Pioneer can die if it's not tanky enough. Without the third line ruin, it can also get stunned, although it's very easy to mistime your last hit versus high DPS hunters like Taekwon and Novice Guardians. Here's the Mech Pulse Star Ruin that he mentioned to help the Pioneer with stun. Next is Cat. Very RNG heavy and quite easy to lose the last hit battle versus Wataru because Dragon King's Rage is much stronger and has better animation than Machine Revolution. This is the Wataru class, and this is what the Dragon King's Rage does. He continues, Anything below except probably Poitata, Lightbringer is king since it can move very fast without third party buffs and has various tools and very good elemental coverage in fire and neutral. You can also machine revolution where you start, then pioneer the next MVP, then maybe just arm cannon the next one or use machine revolution again. Then for the weaker ones, you can just one shot with knuckle boost. Next, how well do you think Lightbringer performs in weekly PvE content? He said, as a ranged DPS, only second in terms to Novice Guardian, and probably a bit better than Taekwon, because you can use Anti-Fatal. I don't really do Legend with LB anymore, since it's inconsistent versus Nuka, unlike Novice Guardian, which can easily take the Disarm debuff to make the run smoother. But it is very strong, especially for Floor 1 and Floor 2 but falls off heavily in Floor 3. Next, what is your PvE slash boss hunting gear? He shared an image of his gear and I'll go over each one in detail. In addition, he also provided his advice for best in slot for gears and cards. The screenshots were taken from Global, so the enchants aren't the ones he actually has. First for offhand, he has the Dragon Slayer Martial Merit for the physical damage increase. He has 18% physical damage increase random attribute, and he uses the Meryl Roland card. The best in slot is the offhand he's using, and the non-legend version is the Dragon Bone Shield. The ideal random attribute is 18% physical damage increase. If you don't have 160% ignore defense because you don't have good morale and chance, then the Voodoo Blade with the 30% ignore defense random attribute is great. The ideal enchant is the armor breaking for penetration percentage. The best in slot card is the Alice Star card for damage to MVPs. Next for armor, he uses the cursed armor for the ignore defense. He has the 10% penetration random attribute. He uses the heart card for damage to MVPs. For best in slot, he recommends the Witch's Feast with the 15% HP random attribute. This gear will add a lot of SP and HP. The ideal enchant is morale for ignore defense. So why does SP and HP matter? We'll have to look at self-destruction, which relies on these factors, and the skill is used to calculate your machine revolution damage. For mana mentioned that machine revolution got nerfed recently, so the HP cap is now at 1 million. Getting 1 million HP is pretty difficult, which is why there's so many enchants for HP percentage. Another important note for Machine Revolution is skill damage does not affect this, so keep that in mind if you're trying to tweak your Machine Revolution damage. The best in slot card is the Gloom card, which is common among boss killers, because so many popular bosses fall under Holy, Dark, Angel, or Demon. In the China Beta test server, there is an upcoming card called the Poitata Star card that will likely come to our servers. Now, this has an insane 25% damage to non-demi humans, which is pretty crazy, but it will cost you 3 MVP cards. For Garment, he uses the Brave Warrior's Pauldron for the Ignore Defense and the 12% skill damage random attribute. For Card, he uses the Mastering Star card. The best in slot is the Brave Warrior's Pauldron with the 12% skill damage and max HP percentage and physical damage increase as the ideal enchant. For cards, the Mastering Star card is great for physical damage increase, and an alternative is the Eclipse Star card for max HP percentage. For footgear, he uses the Loon's Memorial for the attack percentage with the 6% penetration random attribute. 
uses the Moonlight Flower Star card for the insane move speed and being immune to speed reduction. The best in slot is the footgear he's using, and the non-legend version is the Dragon Slayer's War Boots, and the ideal random attribute is the 6% penetration. The ideal in chance is the max HP percentage and the physical damage increase. For new players, he recommends the Death Cat Boots and the Verit card. The much coveted Moonlight Flower Star card is definitely not something many people have or can afford. Next, for both accessories, he's using the Frozen Rose Ring, and he uses the Scorpion card. Both of these are to deal with the MVP, Seed of Yggdrasil. For best in slot, if you are dealing with Seed, then the Frozen Rose Ring is the best. For general bosses, the Pendant of Ugin with the 4.5% physical damage increase random attribute is good. For cards, it depends on what boss you're targeting, so I won't put any ideal cards here. The ideal enchant is physical damage percentage increase and sharp blade for melee attack percentage. Next for weapon, he's using the plus 15 avalanche with two Minora star cards. The best in slot is the plus 15 avalanche, although some people will swap in the plus 15 engineer's wrench when doing machine revolution. It's really up to your preference. Item searching can be distracting, especially mid boss battle. The ideal enchant is morale. For cards, the ideal one is the Drake Star card, and you want to have two of those and have one deposited. This will add a ton of damage to large monsters, which most bosses are. For head, he uses the Bashful Moment for damage to monsters, and he uses the Norman card. Bashful Moment is the best in slot, and the ideal enchant is Vitality. The ideal card is the Adumbla card for the penetration percentage. For face, he uses the Juggling Queen for MVP damage, which is also the best in slot. Morale is the ideal enchant. For mouth, he uses Huge Bounty for MVP damage. This is also the best in slot, and Vitality is the ideal enchant. Next for back, he uses the plus 6 Goodwill Gift Box for MVP damage. This is the best in slot, and the ideal enchant is max HP percentage. Next for Tail, he uses the Rock Bunny for move speed and damage to monsters. This is also the best in slot and the ideal enchant is physical damage increase and max HP percentage. Next for Ancient Relic, this is a screenshot from his account. He uses the Elf's Piccolo, which has amazing buffs. A cool thing that he mentioned was the fixed cast time reduction reduces the butterfly wing time, so you can get back into town quicker so you can murder more MVPs. Next. How do you allocate your attributes? He replied, It will be different for everyone. Strength has to be a total 240 for avalanche bonus. Doesn't matter if you use wrench. Vitality is 159. Dexterity is 159 if you planned a knuckle boost. Put much less if not. Focus on luck, then int for machine revolution focus. Int and luck should be no more than 119. Here's a screenshot of his allocations for his character. The attributes will differ depending on how much you multi-class and the gear and deposits you have. Next, what are your character stats and handbook? He provides stats for when he hunts for seed. He has 59% penetration, 12% skill damage, damage is at 169%, physical damage increase is at 105.3%, and Ignore Defense is at 161.5%. For mana mentioned that Ignore Defense should be at least 160%. Here his Elemental Damage Increase. Here are his Racial Damage Increase. And he has 51% damage to large, so it's enough to activate the 50% Ignore Defense Insight effect of the Minoras card that's deposited in his handbook. For Adventure Handbook, he has an incredible 4,144 attack. Also, he has 128% damage deposits, and here's the rest if you're interested. Next, what advanced ruins and oracle mirror do you use for PvE slash boss hunting? Here is his overall advanced ruin setup. You can also see the minor ruins that he uses. 
Now let's take a closer look at his ruins. Here is his Mech Pulse Star Ruin. Here is his Rapid Armor Ruin. Here is his Machine Restart Star Ruin. Here is his Iron Fist Ruin. Here is his Ballistic Modification Ruin. And here is his Energy Cannon Ruin. For Oracle Mirror, just Fire Knife and Death Cat Cape, plus 8 out of 10. I never really invested in MVPing since I really didn't have to. All my resources went to PvP. Whatever cheap PvE stuff I could get, I stuck with. The best in slot Oracle Mirror Extract is to use the plus 15 bill which will provide you with a ton of MVP damage. Next, what skills do you use in PvE and what is your skill rotation? I'll quickly show his skills and then go in depth. Here's his first set of manual and auto skills. Here's his second set of manual and auto skills. Here is his prepare for elite. If you want a sample build that has all his skills, this is what I use for PvE and farming, and then I copy the manual and auto skill setup that 4mana uses. Here are my merchant skills. Here are my blacksmith skills. Here are my whitesmith skills. And here are my mechanic skills. Here are his skills for his manual bar. There's trading master, target lock on, play dead, first aid, circle, and restart. For his second manual bar, he has overload increase, photon cannon, prepare for elite, machine revolution, the pioneer, and arm cannon. In his prepare for elite, he has weapon perfection, loud exclamation, adrenaline rush, overthrust, cart boost, overthrust max, and anti-gravity armor. There's definitely a lot of move speed increasing skills here. For his auto attack skills, one bar has just knuckle boost, and the other one has just machine revolution. With this setup, prepare for elite already covers a lot of his buffs, and then he needs to cast overload increase. With this setup, you can easily do pioneer, machine revolution, and knuckle boost. He covers the skill usage when you discuss the MVPs in depth, so now you know how he uses it with the two bars to achieve this. Two manual skills that may not be obvious are first aid and play dead. For mana explain these in detail. First aid is for the MVP point system. For example, here I had used first aid and you can see that the effective healing shows up for my performance. So even though I missed the last hit, I had many of the other MVP points that contribute to me being the MVP. Next for play dead, there are some undead MVPs that require random actions, such as 5 people playing dead, so that's why it's there. Next, what foods do you eat? He said, penetration times 6. Move speed times 6 if I don't need damage from penetration food anymore. Having more move speed is a must. For B meals, vitality B and strength B. Satisfied feast is the penetration percentage food, and the move speed food is the original will fish steak. Next, what is a Lightbringer achievement that you are most proud of? He replied, definitely being able to hunt everything before anyone else, especially Ermis, and then the new Eclage and Komodo Relic MVPs. LP was the king of MVPing when it got released, and until Wataru came out, then the power creep got out of hand due to Oracle Extracts and Relics. Now it's just an RNG fest, and the new MVP mechanics and the updated ones do not favor LB at all. Next, where can people find you? 4mana gave his YouTube page, which I'll put as a link in the description. He says, I upload casually some PvP here and there. He also lists his Discord ID. 4mana, 
number 6140. You can find me hanging out at the unofficial Discord too. I'll also put a link to the unofficial Discord channel in the description. Next, any shoutouts? He said, shout out to Urge Guild and the people at the unofficial Discord. A huge thanks to 4 Mana for his detailed PvE guide. Stay tuned for part 2 where he'll be going over his PvP build. If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, and subscribe.